Go ahead and solve this integral for yourself. All right, so here's my solution. I'm going to use trig substitution. Okay, so now remember for trig substitution, when you have the square root and an x squared or term squared plus or minus a constant or a constant plus or minus a term squared, the way to choose which trig ratio you want your term to be equal to or which substitution you want to make is with your trig identities. So we know one of our identities is sine squared of theta plus cosine squared of theta is equal to 1. Okay, now I remember the other identity with involving secant and tangent by dividing through by cosine in this identity. So what happens there is sine squared divided by cosine squared is tangent squared. And then obviously cosine squared divided by cosine squared is just 1. And then 1 divided by cosine squared is secant squared. So now I have my two identities here. And I'm looking what best matches this. So I have a constant and I have my term that is being squared. And both of them are positive. So it makes sense to use tan squared of theta plus 1. And now obviously if this was 1 minus x squared then I would be inclined to use something from this identity because if I take my cosine squared across, I would get 1 minus cosine squared. So it just really depends on what's inside your square root. Okay. So let's go ahead and make the substitution for x to be tan then. So we have x equal to tan of theta. Okay, now the derivative of x in terms of theta is going to be secant squared of theta. All right, now we can make these substitutions. Our integral is now equal to, so for dx, we're going to swap in secant squared of theta d theta. So we have secant squared of theta d theta. And then for this denominator, x squared is going to be tangent squared, so we have tan squared of theta. And then within this, we're going to have the square root of tan squared of theta plus 1. Okay, but tan squared of theta plus 1 is secant squared of theta. So we can erase that and we write secant squared of theta. But when you are rooting a square, they both fall away. And we're just left with secant of theta. But now we have a secant of theta in the denominator and a secant squared of theta in the numerator. So we can get rid of that one and we can get rid of that 2 in the exponent. So now, rewriting this in terms of sines and cosines. Secant in terms of cosine is 1 over cosine of theta times by 1 over and then tangent squared of theta is sine squared of theta over cosine squared of theta, d theta. Okay, but if we have 1 over something, we're doing the reciprocal, so we can simply invert that. So now we can have cosine squared of theta over sine squared of theta. But now we have two cosines, so that can cancel, and we can get rid of that too in the exponents. Okay, now that makes it much simpler. Because now we can make another substitution where we can say, let u equal to sine of theta. And what that does is by now deriving u in terms of theta, we're left with cosine of theta. Now, in the numerator, you see we have cosine of theta d theta, and we're going to substitute in du for that. So our integral has du for that, and then 1 over u squared. All right, so now that's pretty much solvable now. We can take that u squared from the denominator into the numerator by making the exponent negative. So now solving the integral of this is simply u to the negative 1, so negative u to the negative 1 plus c. 
Now all that's left to do is to substitute back in terms of x. So for u, we're going to substitute in sine of theta. So we have negative 1 over sine of theta plus c. And it's over because, obviously, of this negative 1, because u to the negative 1 is 1 over u. All right. And now, this next substitution is slightly trickier. So initially, we made tan of theta equal to x. So what does that mean? So let's look at it in terms of this triangle. So let's, let's draw a better triangle. Okay, so just pretend those connected nicely. All right, so we have theta in this corner over here. That's our angle. Now for tan of theta to be equal to x, which is what we initially substituted, our opposite angle is x, and our adjacent angle is 1. Okay, which means our hypotenuse must be the square root of x squared plus 1. Okay, now that's useful because now we can find sine of theta using this triangle. So sine of theta is equal to the opposite side over the adjacent, over the hypotenuse. All right, so our sine of theta is then equal to x over the square root of x squared plus 1. Okay, but since that's in the denominator, we can invert this, and what we'll be left with is negative times by the square root of x squared plus 1 over x plus c. And that'll be the integral solved. Thank you for watching.